everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today we are making the Love Lock Shawl. Now you all know how I love my triangular shawls. I wear them year in, year out in cotton, in acrylic and this time in alpaca. I think they just finish my outfit and I love wearing them. But I'm constantly adjusting them. They slide off your shoulders, they don't sit well. So I thought I would come up with an idea of trying to lock the shawl into place. And indeed, I think I have done that. So I will tell you what small addition you have to add to your shawl to make sure that it locks into place. So that is why I've called this shawl the Love Lock Shawl. I love it, but I want to lock it into place. So for this shawl, I am using Aztec, which is by James C. Brett. It's an Aran thickness yarn and it is with alpaca. So it's 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca. It's machine washable and it's prescribed for a five millimeter hook. But I am going to use a six millimeter hook. This will allow the shawl to sort of drape a little bit more. This color I am using is AL18, but we have all the colors on our website, so do go and have a look to see which one you would fancy. So in total, I've used six balls of James C. Brad Aztec. It's an Aran yarn, and yes, I used more than a whole ball for the tassels. So for this shawl, I'm using my six millimeter hook, I also am using my darning needle with the big eye to sew in my ends, which is really handy for the Aran. And I have four stitch markers, which I'm going to be using to indicate the first and the last stitches of each side. And then of course you also need scissors. So let's get started. Make your slip knot whichever way you usually make it. You insert your hook and we're going to chain four. So one, two, three and four. Then you go back to the first chain you did. You go into that. You bring over the working yarn, loop it behind the hook, pull it through the stitch and through the loop on your hook. You now have a mini circle and that's what we are going to be working in. So now we are going to chain two. Then we are going to place four double crochets into that circle. So yarn over into the middle of that circle and pick up your yarn, creating your double crochet. So a double crochet is yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And the fourth one, there we go. Okay, so we've done four double crochets and our chain two. Now this chain two is going to count as our fifth double crochet. Okay, so just so that you are aware. Then we do two chains. This will be the tip of our shawl. And now we're going to do five double crochets into the circle. Two, three, four and five. There we go. So in a way we already have our triangular shape. So 
So now for row three, you are going to chain one. Now, every row is going to start with a chain one. This chain one is disregarded. We are not going to count it. We are just going to count from the first stitch that we do. And we're going to indicate them. So after doing your chain one, you're going to turn your work, then you yarn over and into the same stitch where that chain one is coming out of, you're going to place a double crochet. So this V here is the V of your last stitch when you come back. So we are going to indicate that this is the last stitch that we have to use. And now we are going to do a second double crochet into that first stitch. There we go. So each row is started with a chain one, which we disregard. We turn and then we do two double crochets and we indicate the first stitch. Then we are going to be placing double crochets on top of the double crochets of the row below. So in this case, there are four to do. There we go. Four. And now we are going to start creating the tip. And the tip is made up of two double crochets but this second double crochet is also the last stitch of your side so we're going to also indicate that one here because this is the one that we are going to be using as last before we start doing the tip in the next row then we are going to continue with our tip so one two chains. Now we are going to start the other side and also the other side of our tip, which means we're going to do two double crochets. But after I've done my first double crochet, I'm going to indicate it with a stitch marker. So this is the V I'm going to indicate. So then I know which one it is that I have to start working in again in the next row. So that was one double crochet for our tip and we need to do a second one. There we go. So each tip is made up of two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets. So now here we have the side to complete. And on this side, we did four double crochets before we did the double one. So we are going to do the same thing here. So go into the first stitch, one, two, three, and four. And this chain two counted as a stitch, exceptionally, only in this round, okay? So we're going to be placing two double crochets in a round, see what you can manage. I'm going just in front here of that two chain. Normally I would try and get it into the chain, but whichever location is fine. So now you have 16 stitches. So for row four, we're going to chain one, you turn, you do two double crochets in the first stitch, But I always stop to just indicate this first V here with a stitch marker, just so that I know what I'm doing when I come back. And then I do my second double crochet. There we go. So that's the start of our row. And now we are going to be placing one double crochet on each double crochet on the side. And of course, this time we have indicated which is the last location for a double crochet. 
So that's this one here. So I'm going to remove the stitch marker, put it in there. That's taken the guesswork out of which is which to use here. And now we're going to start doing the two double crochets for the tip. But of course, the second one of them is going to be our last stitch in the next row. So I'm just going to indicate that one with my stitch marker. Then we continue with our chain two, then two double crochets for that other side of the tip. But of course, this one is the one where we are going to have to be placing our stitch marker in. So just keep an eye on that for now, because of course our stitch marker is still in this stitch here. So I'm going to remove it. I'm going to do my stitch where that stitch marker just came out of. And then I'm going to count back to the third stitch, one, two, three. And in there is where I'm going to place my stitch marker ready for the next round. And then you just continue with placing your double crochets on top of your double crochets. Until, of course, you meet the stitch marker. Here we have it. And in there, you are going to be placing two double crochets. So to start with and to end with, we are doing two double crochets. There we go. So each row is increased by six stitches and we are going to be doing quite a few rows. Now, we have now done three rows of double crochets. Now we are going to do row five which is going to be half double crochets in the back loop only. But we still need to start with our double crochets to make sure that our shawl grows enough in the width. Okay, so same start, chain one, turn, two double crochets in the same stitch, in the same fast stitch indicate now that you still know which one it is your last or first stitch there depending on how you look at it and now we are going to start doing half double crochets in the back loop only so the v's looking towards you the back loop is this one here these are the front loops these are the back loops so you yarn over go into the next stitch back loop only Pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the three loops on your hook. And this is how you will do the stitches on this side. When you get to the stitch with the stitch marker in, of course, you know that this is your last stitch of the side. So you can do that one. There we go. Voila. And now we have the chain and the tip to create. And we are going to be doing the tip in half double crochets as well, but not in the back loop because we work around the chain space. So you do two half double crochets, two chains and two half double crochets. Although when you have done this one, that's the one that you're going to indicate. And of course, this one as well. So make sure you don't forget to replace your stitch markers. I was being a little bit too quick there. So this one there. So I know I have to do another one here. Now I take this stitch out because this is going to be my first one again of my side. So using the back loop only, I create a half double crochet. And now I know I have to go back three stitches to replace my stitch marker. And I keep on doing this because to me, this is going to keep my shawl 
created correctly with each time knowing really well which is my last and first stitch of the side. And the same here as well. So now we continue half double crochets in the back loop only until of course we meet the last stitch which is the one with the stitch marker in take the stitch marker out and we are indeed going to finish the same way as we always do with double crochets so you just pick up both the loops and you do two double crochets Here, I always like picking up the two loops. It's just for sturdiness of your shawl. If you just picked up the back loop, it just extends. And if you do it here in the two, then at least it's a bit more sturdier for the edge there. Okay, so this is where we are at now. And I think it's looking really nice. <music> So now for row six, we're going to chain one, turn, then you do your two double crochets in the first stitch and make sure you replace your stitch marker after you've done the first one. So now the second one, there we go. Now we're going to start the boxes, so we chain one and we do a double crochet in the next stitch. So we have our first box made and then we are going to chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next chain one, skip one and a double crochet in the next and you continue like this until of course you meet your stitch marker here. So that's the location for your double crochet right there. So go in there, skip one and then into the next one. There we go into the one where the stitch marker was in. And then of course here, you now straight away have to start creating the tip. So you do your two double crochets, replace your stitch marker into that last V that you've just created, because that will be your last stitch in the next row. Then we continue with our two chains for the tip, then two double crochets for the rest of the tip, of course. And then here we have the first stitch of our row. So take out the stitch marker, place a double crochet in there, because that's how we're going to get started. Then you count back the three stitches and you place your stitch marker there. So you've got it ready there. And then of course we start doing our boxes. So chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next and so on. Then when you get to the end, you will put your double crochet here because that's the natural continuation. Then you do a chain and then you place two double crochets into the stitch with the stitch marker. This is how we started and this is how we are going to end as well. There we go. So now we have this look 
and we have this look on this side. So you will notice that these half double crochet rows will alternate, so there won't be a front or a back to your shawl. So I like doing that because then it's easy for you to wear the shawl. So now we are going to do another row of double crochets. So we chain one, you turn two double crochets in the first stitch, replace your stitch marker, so second double crochet to be done. There we go. And now quite simply for our row of double crochets, which we do after the boxes row, we're just going to place two double crochets in each box. So let's get started on doing that. And that gives sort of a little bit of a, an effect with the stitches. And I thought I really liked that. Now, when you get to the end of the row here, you've got three double crochets. So you just go and do your three double crochets on top of those three double crochets, because of course there's no box that you can go into. When you reach that last one, take out the stitch marker, go into it, and then you do, of course, the two double crochets for your tip and you replace the stitch marker. It gets a little habit but it helped me so much. Now two chains then the other two double crochets for your tip and then of course here the three double crochets on the side and just remove that stitch marker first. There we go. And before I do any more stitches, I replace it in the third one there. So I have the correct location when I get back. Voila, three stitches done. And now we do our two double crochets in each box. And so here we've reached the end of our row. We will be skipping this stitch here, but we are going to be placing our two double crochets into the last stitch. So let me just remove the stitch marker, tip it towards you. There is that last stitch. And you place two double crochets in there. There we go. So this is where we are at now. So we started the shawl, then we did two rows of double crochets, then one row of half double crochet boxes, and then another row of double crochets. But now we are going to start the repeat. And the repeat is the following. So this is row four, where you are going to just be placing double crochets. So we do two rows of row four after row seven. Then you do your back loop only half double crochet row, then your boxes, and then your row of double crochets which go into the boxes. So in essence, you've got one, two, three rows of double crochets, one row of half double crochet, and a row of boxes in your repeat. So you're repeating five rows, four, four, five, six, seven, in the pattern. So when you continue your shawl, you will notice that you always have three rows of double crochets, then your 
back loop only row with the half double crochets and then your boxes three rows half double crochets back loop only boxes and because it alternates it looks different on both sides but it looks interesting on both sides so you don't really have a front or a back to your shawl okay there we go so you will now keep on doing row four row four row five row six and row seven throughout your shawl until you think it is long enough so go for a fingertip to fingertip measurement if that is what you want and then to end we are going to be repeating row four another two times so we end in two rows of double crochets like this of course i have still a bit more work to do so i will see you when my shawl is big enough oh my goodness here we are i have had such a great time crocheting this once i had the sort of you know the the row repeat down it was so nice to just sit and do the rows crochet watch some netflix and just spend some lovely time crocheting so yes it was very enjoyable and i have now used five balls I still have half a ball left. I'll explain about that in a moment. Um, and the length across the shoulders is one meter 60. And I think that's enough for me. If I hold it out, it is fingertip to fingertip. Uh, it will stretch a little bit, so that's fine. And so now I have ended on these two rows. So I have ended on the two rows of double crochets you might want to choose which row you end on the thing is i'm going to be very cheeky and i'm going to add a boxes row to my shawl and then yeah i can hear you say it yes tassels so i have this half a ball left so i'm hoping i can use that one to do the boxes and then yes i'll have to break into a sixth ball to yes put the tassels on so yeah, last row of boxes to be done for those tassels. And no, I am no longer using the stitch markers now. <laughs> it's the last row. So that's the end of my last row of boxes that I have just finished my shawl with. And now, of course, we are going on to making the tassels. So let me show you, where is the point? I'm looking for the point. <laughs> there we go. So let me show you how to put the tassels on. For the tassels, I like to use my fabric scissors to cut them off because cutting through multiple strands of yarn is much easier when you use these bigger scissors. Then for attaching the tassels to my shawl, I use a hook to just pull through the tassel through the boxes. Then I have one and a half balls of yarn left over here, so I tend to use those. Then I have here my chocolates box, which I've been using to make my tassels for a long time. One circumference this way is 30 centimeters, and that's or 12 inches, and that's sort of the ideal length for a good tassel. So let's get on with making the tassels. <laughs> of strands of about 30 centimeters and this is what I'm going to be using for making my tassels so I suggest putting on <laughs> some Netflix or something like that you count how many tassels you're going to use one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten I'm going to use ten I think 
I mean, to be honest, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, per da if you do 11 of them or 9, nobody's going to count them. But so hold them all at the, about the same length. This is not about the same length, but never mind. We will readjust slightly and then hold them in the middle. Then using your hook, I suggest starting on the tip. Make sure you do this the same way each time. So don't move your shawl, leave it as it is. You go from the top down, you bring back your tassels. So this is the chain space in the middle. You bring back your tassels through the chain space here, take out your hook and then with your fingers take the ends through. There we go. And then you will be doing them all the same way. So this one really is the front, but if I do them all the same way that they're all facing in the same direction. So now you work your way up the side with attaching your tassels. I'm going to go for it and I'm going to put it every other box. That gives it a little bit of space in between and makes it a little bit more interesting. Oh my goodness, I am loving this. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> nice thick tassels. Lovely. <laughs> going to make your slip knot whichever way you usually make it insert your hook and you're going to chain four so one two three and four then in the second chain from your hook you're going to place a half double crochet so yarn over insert pull up a loop yarn over and pull through the three loops on your hook you're going to place a half double crochet in the next one. There we go. And also in that first one. There we go. Okay. So now you're going to chain one, turn, and you place three half double crochets along your row. So one in each stitch. There we go, that first or last stitch leans towards the front a little bit, so you just need to tip your work. So each time you've done your three half double crochets, you chain one, you turn and you start working your row again. So doing a little row of three Stitches, of course, means you are constantly turning. There we go. Let's see. Did I pick up? Yep. Voila. Okay. So you're going to be doing this sort of for a length like this, about 10, 15 centimeters. So I will see you when you have finished your lock. So my little strap here is about 15 centimeters long and mm, just about three centimeters wide. That's six inches long and about one inch wide. So cut off the yarn with a little bit of extra so you can use the end and the end here for sewing on onto your project. Now, of course, we know that um, crochet stretches and this does as well. You can use it the way it is, but I'm going to put some embellishment on this one here. I'm going to use my hook like this, going into a hole there, pull up some yarn and I'm going to start slip stitching. 
So now you go into a location a little bit further on and you bring up the yarn and do a slip stitch. And I'm doing this reasonably tight, I'm not pulling it together because I still want it to have the same dimensions when I am finished. But I'm certainly making sure that look, when you pull, look when I pull this side, it expands. When I pull this side, it doesn't. So this will stop it from expanding and will make the look work better. So I'm just going to go around my little strap here in a big rectangle all along the sides. There we go. So this is this one. Yeah. Doesn't matter how many stitches you do, just so that it works to stop it from stretching. There we go. So now I'm going to sew in this end from my slip stitch, but the end I have from making the straps, so these ones here, those are the ones I'm going to be using to attach it to my shawl. So now it's time to put your lock on and I have added the lock with some crocodile clips there. And so you can see the two ends hanging out and those are the ones I'm going to use to just attach the lock on the ends to the shawl in this position there. So in the middle almost of the top of one of the sides of the shawl. So I'm using my big eyed needle and I had just attached this with that crocodile clip just for location purposes. And really what I'm going to be doing is just gently sewing this on to the shawl. There we go. So in here, so I just pick up whole strands, go back to our little lock, come back to the shawl, picking up whatever you can and making sure that your little lock is attached. You could make a feature of it and put buttons there. Um, I'm just going to go for the neutral look, so to speak. So this is the shawl, let me try and show you, there we go.